Hi everyone, Linda here from the Scrapbooking Photographer. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm very excited to be joining In The Hop for celebrating Brianna Spore's 500 subscribers. So thank you to all you people who subscribe to our channels. We really appreciate your support. Brianna has a channel on YouTube called Love My Life on Paper. Brianna has also submitted a sketch to Christie's Beautiful Life and 30 Days of Sketches, which is the one due for today, the 31st of October. So because it's Halloween, we were encouraged to perhaps use that sketch with Halloween photos or to do a monochromatic layout in black and white. So what I have chosen to do is go with the black and white theme on the sketch. This is the sketch we will be working with today. So the first thing that I noticed about it was that it has two portrait and two landscape photos and that this landscape photo is tucked under a portrait photo. So using the rule of thirds, I have lots of photos with the main subject on one side. Um, in this particular case, it was on the other side, so I flipped it. So let me show you the photos. Guess what? They're of dogs. Now the 31st of October is also one of my dog's birthday, Pippa, um, who I think you've all seen photos of. She turns nine today on the 31st of October so I thought it only fitting that we use her photos or some photos of her when she was younger so this is um, her she was about six months old at this stage and this is Jasper who was a fantastic big brother to her and I'm sure you've seen pictures of him before now the landscape photos that I've talked about this is uh, Pippa and Jasper bringing up the rear. He's got a ball in his mouth. That's why he looks a little goofy. So that's a nice landscape photo with them on the right. And then this one, I actually flipped this one as well because they were running the other way. But because it's going on the right hand side of the page, I want them to be running into the page, not running out. So this is Jasper and Pippa. So you can see he's quite a bit bigger. She had quite a bit of growing to do there. Jasper, unfortunately, we have lost. But uh, Pippa, in the way of life, is now a big sister to two younger ones. So, following the sketch, we're going to kind of do something like this. Okay, now the other things I'm going to take from the sketch is the film strip, the splashes, uh, this little bit up here, and I might do something a little bit different in there, but with a circular uh, movement. So these frames, it looks like we've got two different black frames around each one. Now because these photos are black and white, that won't necessarily show up that well. So I'm going to use a combination of colours throughout the whole page. In photography, when we talk about black and white photos, it's always a good idea to make sure that the photo has some white and some black and all colours in between. And that just gives a good range of contrast throughout um, a black and white photo. Obviously it's different if you're doing a silhouette or something that's um, high key, but in, in for normal black and white photos, it's good to have a range of the greys in between. And you can see here, we've got some good colour in amongst the shadows in his uh, little bits and pieces. Okay, so, the three colours I'm going to use are obviously some black and some pewter and some mink. I have cut a film strip out on my Cricut, which is just uh, this little piece here. And I'm going to use that top, bottom and in the middle down there. The first thing I'm going to do is cut out several frames in these three colours. We need two, four, six, eight different frames. So I'm going to do a collection out of these so that they kind of uh, fit there. And then I will play and see how it goes. So to cut these frames, the, all the photos are six by four. So I'm going to cut a piece of uh, cardstock in half. So that's six inches along. And then if I come in four, we'll get three out of this set. Now I know they're the same 
size as the photo, but that's kind of what we want. We're going to position them around to show out the insides. If I turn this around, you'll see that this ruler here counts from 0 to 12, and we're going along here. So if I put this in for a quarter of an inch, I can then use this ruler to come in a quarter of an inch also, and go up to stop at a quarter of an inch from the edge. So in effect, what we're doing is gutting the inside out of these frames. And because I've used three pieces um, that are four inches wide, I'll end up with three frames of each colour that I'm doing, which is nine, and we only need eight, but that's okay. okay and then this should just pop out. If you get frayed bits from a blade that isn't quite sharp, you can just smooth them out underneath. And this corner where it wasn't quite measured right, I'll just tuck that under something else or make this the ninth frame. Anyway, I'm going to go and cut the others out and I'll come back when I've got uh, nine of those prepared. So I can speed this video up a little bit now. I've got my nine frames of which I'll use eight of them. And I'm just going to position the photos where I want them. I don't think I want them to be particularly straight. They're going to be a little bit haphazard. And the frames are going to be a little bit haphazard as well. But if you put the black against the black photo, it kind of gets lost. So I'm playing here with putting the lighter colours against the photo and then the black over the top, particularly for those portrait ones. And then for the landscape ones, they're a little bit lighter around the edge, so perhaps the black will fit um, better against the greyness of the grass. So after dry fitting everything a little bit, I decide that it's kind of good enough to stick down. But rather than stick permanently, I'm just going to put a little bit of adhesive on each of the frames in one spot just so that I can move them easier without getting them all mixed up. And I'm also making sure at the same time that um, the different angles of the frames hasn't resulted in cutting off any pores or heads. So once I've got all of those sort of stuck together, I can put them to one side and then work on the white daisy background to get some mixed media going. Looking at the sketch, there's a few splashes around and a circle in the middle, which I'll take from this stamp and thin cuts um, that came out with the autumn set. The splashes, I'm going to do something a little bit different using this texture stamp that I particularly like. So to start with, I'm going to use pewter. Turning the Versamat over so that I'm stamping on the sponge side, I just need to bring the photos in briefly to make sure I position the texture stamp in the right place. Now I like things in threes, so I'm going to firstly go up the top so it's going to be above the photos and behind where the film strip's going to go. The second stamp is in the middle, and I'll just check with Jasper to make sure I'm sort of half underneath him and half seen. And the third stamp is going to go up in the top left corner, but I just pop a little bit of scrap paper underneath so that I can stamp over the edge of the white daisy. So I'll go and clean that stamp up, and then bringing in the uh, dots, I'm going to go over the top but in black. So again, just slightly overlapping in those three spots, and I think that just adds a different sort of dimension. And for a third dimension, I'm bringing in some intense black, which I've squeezed the lid together on the ink pad to make the lid a bit um, inky. And then I've mixed in some water from my sprayer and using my fan brush, mixed it all together and then just uh, tap it over the top of those two stamps that I've already done. So that brings in a third sort of uh, texture all over. And then before I put the stamp back together again, it's really important that you wipe the lid to get rid of all the water out of it so that it doesn't contaminate the ink pad when you put it back together. 
a quick clean up around the mat but before I put that away to dry I'm going to bring in a gold shimmer pen. It seems only fitting given that the girls are all golden retrievers. So I'll pop that away to dry and while it's drying I can cut out these circles um, with this thin cut. Now it'll fit nicely inside the bits that came out of the frame um, that we cut out. So I'm going to cut three out, one in each colour, and the insides can go away for another day. So bringing the page back in, you can see that shimmer there that just shines in the light. I really like that. So I'll bring the photos back and position them on the page so that we can get an idea of where these circle bits are going to go. I like the way the three of them group together, so I'll just uh, clump them together and pop them underneath the photos and spread them out so that we can see all three colours. And I really like the way that looks. Now the film strip, I need to measure up the top first so I have enough to uh, stick out from the top of that photo. And then again, I'll do the same at the bottom and I'm just ripping it and I'll stick it down and put those ripped ends underneath the photo. Nobody sees what's underneath, do they? And then stick that little bit in the middle so we get that look like it's a continuous film strip from top to bottom. The next piece of the sketch that I'm going to do is the little banner up on the top left corner. I'm going to take some of the mink coloured cardstock and stamp this little camera in black. So that comes off a stamp set that is now retired. And I'll make a little dovetail on both sides of the camera piece and then mount it on a piece of pewter with black in the background. Just while I'm making that, I'll remind you that this is a hop for Brianna. So I encourage you to watch what everybody else has come up with to celebrate with her. When you watch the videos, please leave a thumbs up or a comment. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, then subscriptions are free. So um, tick that little box and you will get notified of any future videos that come up by that person. As you can see, the tab is just about in place. So the next thing I'm going to do is the heading, which is going to come straight from the stamp called Furry Friends. This will have a companion page going with it at some point with uh, some more journaling and some more photos. But for today, I'm going to call it Furry Friends and just use that one stamp up the top and then add a little paw print in each corner around it just to draw attention to it. And the little paw print has hearts in it as well just like the camera does. So I've brought in my black and white embellishments and just using the black hearts to do three little sets of three dotted around the page. Next I'll add a little bit of journaling in the spot on the left that doesn't have too many stamps on it. And that will complete my page for today's Hot for Brianna. So congratulations again Brianna on your 500 subbies. Thank you everyone who has watched today. I hope you've enjoyed it and maybe enjoyed it enough to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thank you to everybody who's been watching and happy crafting everybody.